Good morning, everyone. Just got done doing my home care early in the morning, about to start a week, Monday, Monday morning. And I was thinking about something actually last night, and I was thinking I should, I should talk about this because this is the reality that I think a lot of us were faced with when we got into chiropractic. And I know everyone gets in for a little bit of a different reason, and I can resonate with one of the groups pretty well, and the other, it it's just not me so you know how it works where people typically can understand and they resonate with others that are like them so this thought process i wanted to distill down into what drives you and it's not a question it's not what what drives you it's here's what drives you there's there's a couple of things that drive you to do anything and everything that you do in practice for the most part why you got into chiropractic, why you became a chiropractor. So I put some notes on a board on the other side of this camera. I'll flip it around here in a minute. But first off, before we get started with that, just real quick, a little bit about where I'm going with this or what you can do with this information. After you hear what I'm gonna talk about, and if you're with the first camp and not with the second camp, then we have something you might be interested in and you can check it out at demo.movenowyou.com. You can watch a 30 minute pre-recorded demo of us going behind the scenes and showing you how, as far as what drives us, how we put this together, what fuels the machine every single day. So I'm gonna talk about this in a second. So let me flip this around and I will, I will narrate this process. So I have, I have written on a board here, it says, what drives you? And I put some thoughts together. Okay, this is some of us, all right? I think a lot of us, I think this is what gets us into chiropractic. And I have written up here, it says leading with best outcomes, significance, being a leader and leaving a legacy. All right, so that's, that's one thing that drives us to do anything. But in this case, we're talking to chiropractors, talking about chiropractic. This is what gets us to decide to go to chiropractic school to decide what kind of systems and techniques we're gonna do. We wanna do the best with our patients. We wanna get the best outcomes. So we feel good inside. We know we're helping people. We know that what we do matters, right? We want significance for ourselves and in our community. We wanna be a leader in the community. We want people in the community to, to think about who they should go to if they have a problem. And it makes you light up inside that people are talking about you behind your back in that nice way, saying, hey, if you need something, go see Dr. Jones. He's awesome. He cares about his patients, but most importantly, he's got the best, the best systems. He's got the best stuff to produce results. And then at the end of your life, what happens? You have a legacy. Okay, so think about this. Think about what, what got you into chiropractic, who was out there who, who, who resonated with you that made you take the plunge. Okay, for, for me, early on, it was learning about Dr. Gonstead. It was learning about what he did. He, he left the biggest legacy in chiropractic, if not one of the biggest legacies in chiropractic. Built the world's largest chiropractic clinic, had a hotel and a landing strip next to it, led with results, had patients from all over the world come travel and see him, and he was able to figure stuff out and deliver results or at least give hope to people where no one else could. Right. And so that story is one that that got got my attention early on. And I said, that's what I want to do. All right. And so when I first got into practice, and this is probably a lot of you doctors out here watching this or listening to this as well. A lot of you in practice probably got into practice and hopefully were in a situation that you could focus on patients. You could focus on clinical skills. You could focus on improving yourself. And you didn't have to put all the focus into running a business and paying overhead and stressing out and all the stuff that so many of us, when you go out on your own, you have to do. Or if you get straight out of school and you start like this, that's a big focus and it takes away from what brought us into chiropractic to begin with. And then it's tough because then it, it puts us in the second category that I'm going to cover. I'm going to flip this around. And so again, I'm talking about what drives you. And this second category looks like this, success, money, security, and whatever it takes. So now let's say that you're driven in the second category straight out the gates, straight before you even go to chiropractic school. 
you're one of those people that doesn't really have a chiropractic story, doesn't really know anything about chiropractic, maybe has never even been to a chiropractor and you're starting school and you're like, well, I heard it's a cool thing to do because I heard you can make a lot of money. Well, most chiropractors in practice, are they successful or are they scraping by? Unfortunately, scraping by, failing. That's a shame. That's a whole other topic. I think we have a solution for that too. But what is it? We want to make money. Okay. This is something that might drive you. Hey, I want to have success in life. And if I'm a doctor, if I'm a chiropractor, you know, that's one of the ways in. And then I have security as far as with my family and my community, whatever. And then let's say that you're doing this and you're like, I'm going to do this no matter what, whatever it takes, or maybe this stuff starts failing and then you get into the whatever it takes and then whatever it takes, I'm going to flip this around, whatever it takes leads back to, I believe, doing all these things that are really not congruent with why we became chiropractors to begin with. I see these ads pop up of the laser wrapped feet, the the just offshoots that really have nothing to do with chiropractic, nothing to do with natural health and healing. I mean, I guess you could say putting lasers on the feet is more natural than taking a drug. Yes. However, it's just, that's not what different that, that that's not what differentiates us as a profession. That's, that's really not why I personally put all the time and energy and expense into chiropractic school and all the seminars and all of that. It wasn't to buy some gizmo to push a button and have it zap someone's feet and then run a bunch of newspaper ads or Facebook ads and then go do a bunch of health talks and drive around and just have this machine of driving people to this, this, this fancy gizmo that you could push a button on and it makes their tootsies all toasty and then now they have like less diab diabetic neuropathy or something. Not to say that that stuff might not be useful, but I'm just saying that can't be what drives you. And if that's what drives you, you're unfortunately going to have a very unsatisfied time in practice. So this message that I'm sharing is for new graduates and it's for if you've been in practice for 20 plus years and you're at the point where you're thinking, man, I'm starting to get complacent. I'm starting to get a little bored. I'm starting to get a little curious to reach outside of what I've been doing for all these years. Maybe I want to be able to help a different patient base or a different type. What do I do? So here's what you do. You go back to this. You go back to this is what should be leading you to end up in this profession. Because if it's this that leads you, I would say quit. I would say get out, go do something else. Because there's lots of other stuff you can do to have success and money and security and do whatever it takes. Do not muddy the waters and do not destroy our profession by doing all these things that have nothing to do with natural health and healing. That's what I would say. That's what an early mentor of mine said early on. He said, if you're not dedicated to being excellent and you're going to be mediocre, save your money, get out, get out now. He was saying this to students in chiropractic school. This is, this is at a seminar and those words stuck in my head forever. He said, he said, save your money, quit while you're ahead, get out. Or remember, what drives you and what you should be leading with. If it's this, if it's best outcomes and significance and being a leader and leaving a legacy, but really having best outcomes, that means, that means you're going to have to put the time and the energy into being an excellent clinician. That means that you're going to have to have better patient care. You're going to have to have more systems in your clinic and you can operate in a way that is simple but it still has to cover the bases. So it has to be simple, but detailed. That's one of those dichotomies. Simple, but extremely methodical and detailed. Every piece broken down is simple, but there's a lot of pieces because the human body is complex. It's not this, this, this easy thing where you can give a one size fits all approach for everyone and you're actually going to help everyone. If that was the case, I don't know. I mean, if that was the case, then all of these chiropractors out there, and really in any profession, all of these mediocre roads out there would be way more successful. Instead, instead what you have is you have these, like let's just talk about chiropractic. You have maybe practice management groups or something that fund clinics for people that have a cookie cutter approach 
they plug the doctor in, the doctor uses all their marketing, uses all their generic type of care, and they have very little success, make very little money, and they get mediocre at best results. They can fix someone's symptoms you know, pretty quickly with some kind of gizmo, but as far as any true correction and actually changing the way that someone's living, that's not really happening. So now, where am I going with all of this? Why did I think about all of this? Because I was talking with actually Brandy, who's on this right now, Brandy is our office manager, and she is helping us reach out to more chiropractors to find those who were leading with, I want the best outcomes, I want significance, I wanna be a leader and I wanna leave, leave a legacy. How do you find these people? How do you resonate with these people? Something that we stumbled upon or kind of led to is we started with segment, right? We got really good at segment. So I know there's a lot of great segmental techniques out there as long as it's specific and, and has, has protocols to it that are evidence-based, I'm all for it. We, we do Gonstead, okay? There's, there's other techniques, there's other doctors in our program that do other great segmental techniques, all right? There's a, a good, good buddy of mine who I've known for a long time is a big time upper cervical chiropractor. He does a very specific segmental approach, but there's limitations to how much you help your patient when you're just focusing on the segment. And if the segment is the most important, don't you want the best stability and integrity for the segment? If that's true, you have to go to the next level, which is posture. You have to look at posture. If someone's, if someone's spine is failing and they're losing the war with gravity every single day, how much segmental integrity are they gonna have? Patient comes in with a severe thoracic hyperkyphosis and they have a bad sixth thoracic that's causing pain and issues with nerve function, maybe causing a problem in their stomach, whatever, and their body is literally crushing from the weight of gravity and they don't have a strong enough structure to hold themselves upright, how effective are you gonna be as their chiropractor doing whatever technique you do working in their mid thoracic spine if you're doing gross manipulation or T6 if you're doing a very specific segmental adjustment. How beneficial are you gonna be for this person if you're not affecting their posture? If you're not getting them more upright, if you're not using methods to actually get them taller and straighter and decrease that kyphotic curve. But now here's where it gets into actually the biggest avenue and the thing that you have these ultra straight chiropractors that would call me a mixer or say that our methods of doing segment posture and movement are some, somewhat in conflict with what chiropractic is about, and I would argue totally not, is that you could have good segmental integrity, you could have a fairly upright posture, but every single time, every single day, you bend over to play with your kids, you, you go to grab some groceries out of the car, you bend over to tie your shoes, you sit down in a crappy, crappy posture and you get up all dysfunctionally, Every time you move, you're going through a pattern where your body gets from A to B, from point A to point B, in a completely dysfunctional way, in a way that does not support body mechanics, in a way that is breaking your body down so that periodically you hurt yourself and you say, I just bent over to pick up a pencil and I threw out my low back. No, it's because you didn't have proper mobility through your hips. You didn't have proper stability through your core. You didn't know how to move properly. You failed to remember how to move properly because all of us knew how to move well at one point when we were little kids at least, most of us did, and then we got conditioned to move dysfunctionally. So where I'm going with that is that segment posture movement, all three of those, I'm gonna flip this around one more time, all three of those, I believe in a very biased, biased opinion of course, that is the way for best outcomes that is the easiest road to have significance in your community because now you're addressing three components where everyone else out there is addressing one of them or maybe two of them or maybe one like segment is the chiropractor and posture is maybe the personal trainer or the physical therapist and movement is maybe the physical therapist if you're lucky but usually more of a personal trainer and then they do kind of a halfway job at it because they're not leading with understanding spine biomechanics like a chiropractor can and should. They don't have x-ray of the spine, for example, like we can, and in a lot of cases, should, I would argue. So then we fail to be the leader, we fail to have legacy, so guess what happens? Guess what happens? We either drop out of chiropractic and do something completely different, or we move over to this side. And we say, I want success, 
I need to make money. I need security. I'm failing at this. I'm going to do whatever it takes. And now whatever it takes becomes something like I need to integrate my practice with something. I need to bring a medical doctor in to start prescribing medications. Okay? That's what I need to do. Or I need to get the fancy lasers for the feet to handle diabetic neuropathy. Or I need to buy some other expensive machine that looks fancy and then I can pull the wool over people's eyes and tell them that I'm actually fixing them. And then I sit down and do these consultations all day long with them and tell them how this $5,000 treatment is going to change their entire life when the fact of the matter is the human body doesn't work like that. It's not a one-size-fits-all approach. So you have a certain percent of pa percentage of patients that get some symptom relief or maybe even get some good long-term relief, and you have a lot of other patients that don't. And then you, what happens? You lose your drive. You start to fail, you start to lose success, you start to make less money, you have less security, so now you find something else, whatever it takes, you jump ship, and you find something else, and you start all over again. And you go through this freaking, just like treadmill of just repeat, 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 which is exhausting, versus here's how we are suggesting that chiropractors out there who want to have all these things and don't want to just keep reinventing and reinventing and reinventing is address all three things. Address segment posture movement, have systems behind it, explain this to your patients, have ways of engaging your patients. You'll be so different in your community, but more importantly, you'll get better outcomes with your patients. You'll get the best outcomes with your patients. And this is something that always since we decided to start sharing these systems that we do in our office, we never, we never tried to lead with, hey, if you want to make more money, come check out how we're doing things. Because that's truly not what I believe is the best way to make more money. If you want to make more money, you can do a whole lot less time and energy and have a whole lot less satisfaction, I feel like, and maybe a lot less uh, results behind what you're doing, which I would say is not as ethical as actually doing the best quality job possible, focusing on patient outcomes and results and having a transformation for your patients. And then the side effect of that, the side effect is yes, you have to make more money doing that because if you're going to put more time and energy into it, have more training, have more expertise, it's going to cost you a little bit more in time and energy and resources at first to be able to deliver that type of care. So, this is not a short game strategy. This is a long game strategy, but so is, so is having a legacy. Having a legacy is not something you do overnight. Having a legacy is after you've built something that is worth building and you can sit back and have that satisfaction that you put the time and the energy into it. You built something that's unique. And I'm looking at this board right now. You then are, are, are confident that you have the best outcomes you have significance in your community, you're a leader, you leave a legacy. This, this helps you in so many different ways as far as being able to walk in to any other congruent business or even like another business in town that should be referring people to you, like maybe going to like a family practice of a bunch of medical doctors. Not to say that's congruent because it's a totally different model. However, they're looking in most cases, for something that makes their life easier. That's why they refer everyone to a physical therapist. That's why they refer everyone to a pain management clinic. That's why they give someone a drug. It's the easiest thing for them. A lot of them started the same way that we did, but they got disgruntled, they got beaten down, and now they're doing whatever it takes. That's why they just refer blindly out to whomever. However, if you could go in, you could show this stuff to them and you say, look, I'm gonna serve this up to you on a silver platter here's how we take this patient referral from you and here's how we help transform this person. A lot of these providers out there are impacted by that and it is significant and they will start to refer their patients to you instead of sending them blindly through these other pathways. I'm using that as one such example because that's also a way that you get in to do health talks. That's a way that you can partner up with other businesses in your area. It's a way that you can talk with attorneys and bring them in and find the good attorneys and not the scumbag ones um, who are actually going to fight for your patient and represent them in their best interest. And at the end of the day, 
You can just say, I know I'm doing the absolute best for my patient. And you think back to why you became a chiropractor to begin with, which again, one more time, what is it? What, what drives you? It's either leading with best outcome significance, being a leader and a legacy, or it's this. Hopefully this is not what drives you over on this side of just, I want some success and make money and have security and I'll do whatever it takes. This is a road, I talk to a lot of chiropractors who have been beaten down over the years and they start to fall into this and they are so thrilled when they, they realize this still exists and that there's a system put together to have all of this. So, which I'm pointing to, in case you're not on the video, I'm pointing to best outcome, significance, leader, legacy. I know I keep saying this, but it's something, I thought about those words for several minutes, I was thinking about this all yesterday. So I thought about this for a while and I was thinking, what is it that, that drove me initially? And what is it that drives so many other chiropractors who I meet who are successful or who gain success? What, what are those common threads? And it's really leading with not, I just want to do something to make the most amount of money. That's not, that's not what we're about. That's not what Move Now University was ever about. And so if you're someone who's watching this or listening to this and you don't resonate with this message, good. I'm saving you a lot of time and energy. And to be honest, we don't really want you in our program anyway, because what we're trying to build is not just a bunch of people in a program. We're trying to build a group of chiropractors who are going to help change our profession and, and really just change the whole perception of what we do. So Please, if you can self-identify, if you're not in that first group, awesome. Good luck to you. Just don't get in our way. That's all I'd say. Check out our demo, demo.movenowyou.com. I got to get going because remember, I still practice full-time, so I got a full day of patience. And Brandy, our office manager, who's still on here, I'll see you soon. Everyone else, thanks for joining us. Over and out.